So, Tom Duan called the race preflop with 10 9 of hearts. And Check they've gone all in. in. Check raise all in against Chan here. Yeah. So, Tom Duan okay. has to hit an 8 or a queen to make a straight. One queen is dead, it's in Chan's hand. 46%. 44, excuse me. Duan is all in at risk here. Chan only has 50k if he loses this pot. Oof. Turn cards an 8. Tom Duan makes a straight. There it is, 100%. They were even stacked too, so Chan down to 50k. I mean, they were practically flipping on the flop. Yeah. Brutal pot, but the hand plays itself. You know, one guy has a double gutter, one guy has top hair, strong one kicker. Yeah. I mean, go, check raising all in when your opponent can still fold and having like 45% when they call, man. These open ended straight draws are so strong. Yeah, I would say that that is definitely a play that we've been discussing. It's pretty good because. You got fold equity. If you get called, you're flipping anyway. Seems like a win-win situation by playing aggressively on the flop. More action again. Four-way flop. I love how we can just transition back and forth between these tables. Because we have multiple feature tables, which is unheard of. It really is. Yeah, so this is amazing. Schwen betting here with just king-10 high. Tom Dwan calls a bottom two pair. Richard Young, top pair. He's going to come along. The uh, equities are so close. Yeah. And you might always think, wow, Sean is getting a little bit out of line, but he always makes up for it on future streets. He clearly has a plan every hand. He really knows how board develop, boards develop and hands as well. So the turn is an eight. That's a full house for Tom Dwan. Ten Schwen here, drawing dead. Yes, remember there's a two calls. He's gonna reach for more chips. He just doesn't think that someone would have an eight. I don't blame him. But Tom Dwan actually has a full house here. 140,000. Tom Duan, chip leader of the tournament. I like this call. I feel like if you raise, you let your opponents get away from his bluffs. You also let Richard Young in there drawing very slimly. Well, he's going to fold. Schwen here just needs to give up if he wants to pres preserve some chips. Quad wow. eights. We've seen a lot of quads today. I think this card should save Tan Shuen because he might not think his opponent will fold a jack. It'd be a very, very big bluff. Yeah, this would be crazy. Sometimes when you bet with so little equity, you just want to like keep firing chips in the middle. Tan Schwen here just representing a big hand, 450,000 chips. His opponent is sitting there with quads, the nut hand. Wow, Tan Schwen just like trying to represent like pocket aces here, trying to blow off a jack or like quads himself. But this is Tom Duan. Tom's going to raise it up. And this is so cool. He's not going for an all-in shove. He realizes how strong this would be. He, he tries to figure, okay, what if I would try to represent something with some crazy bluff here with like queen nine and diamonds or something? What would I do? Yeah. But Tanshwan just quickly folds. It's like, it's so hard, right? When someone bets at this table...
So Tom Dwan's got a straight and a flush draw. That's 50,000. Schwen here raising the flop. Top pair opening a straight draw. So Tom Dwan here just going to call. He realizes his opponent might be willing to stack off with like queen 10, so doesn't want to commit all the chips right now. It's a lot of equity for Tom. So over half, half a million chips in the middle. Turn is a seven. So Tan Schwen here makes a straight and Tom Duan turns a king high flush. They have a lot of chips behind. Tom Dwan leads 300,000. Eight hundred thousand in the middle. If you got a straight here, I don't. This would be a sick fold if Tan Shuen can can find a way out of this pot. Now he's gonna call. React on a river, but this pot is over a million chips. River card is a nine. Action is on Tom Dwan. He likes to see the nine because opponent his opponent could have a like pocket jacks and a flush does beat a full house. Tom Dwan betting again a lot of chips 575,000 575. trying to get called by a straight or a full house right now Tan Xuan here he knows he's not worried about a bigger straight because a bigger straight would probably re-raise on the flop so he thinks he's either getting bullied off of a straight or he just thinks Tom Dwan will have it it's 1.675 million in the middle these are two big stacks going at it. So one shot clock has been used for Tan Xuan here. He knows Tom Dwan is, can be up to no good and make a bluff. Ten second warning before another time bank will be used. He makes a great fold. Well played by Tan Xuan. Just, you know, didn't pay off the straight. So, uh, <laughs> puts a double straight along for Tom. We did get, like, one hand that was 6-12-24 tonight. Yeah. Only one? Only one. I mean, too early in the game. Too early, too late. Wow. <laughs> Those race oh, sizes are going to go up. The Pastrano! <laughs> What's the saying? I bet you regret not straddling now. How much is it? I think that's true. Straddle always has an option yeah, still, right. so it's different yeah. than raising blinds. It just acts like another. Blind, just a, another bigger blind. So Tom gonna make it forty thousand dollars here. And people usually play more aggressive with straddles because there's more dead money being posted. So there's more to gain from raising. I know LW will defend an issue. I never fold. <laughs> I never pulled my straddle. 
So Alpha Flop strongest. His force is still out ahead. He's still over cars. Running straight and flush draws. Doesn't matter. It's really nice to have the chance to improve your hand on the turn. Even if it's just a deuce of clubs, it's still much better potential than when you have a hand like Ace Queen of Diamonds here. I'm gonna check call a bet of 70,000. This is an interesting turn. Both players with a flush draw now. Talmud did not flush draw, but Elton also gains a straight draw. He's gonna assume that 7 and a deuce are both good, and he fires at it. You see these really unconventional, aggressive plays from Elton Sang. They're both awesome to watch, and they really throw a curveball at people. Check for a club. Elton is so tough to play. Oh. Wow. All in from Tom. Tom is not having it. Excellent read. Uh -oh. What a huge decision here. Last time he was the one putting his opponent to the test. So an incredible read from Tom. I think gonna kick himself for betting here. This man has ice in his veins. $75,000 bet. Now we know that Elton has 71% to win this hand. Can he figure that out? A big part of Elton's thought process here is going to be would Tom shove flush here? It's really important to kind of assess if Gabe is going to be high card oriented there or low card oriented and just maybe by checking the turn back he got Pogorski to reveal a lot of that information because he had to check twice there. Tom Dwan, one of the original players of the Triton Hold'em. He's definitely showing his strengths. You know, some creative plays. Ivan Leo, Jack-10 offsuit. 
on the dealer button. So let's go ahead and try and see a flop here. They're both very deep stack. Too much, too much. Way too much. But I think so both players really looking to win this tournament. They're not trying to just min cash this. So we can see a big pot coming. Flop two pair for Ivan Leo. Tom Duan's going to check his ace queen. He doesn't want to bet and get raised and not be able to see a turn card. People in the chat just really want to quickly point out we will be commentating on the six max sixty-five thousand dollar no limit hold'em today. I want to remind you, it's an unlimited re-entry as well. Oh my god. So, you can be in for six bullets. Alright, so bet of 275 by low. Tom here, he checked as the pre-flop raiser. Probably didn't want to try to commit 2.4 million chips on a flop of just ace-queen high. So, I like this play. Kind of make sure he gets to see a cheap turn card. Puts himself in a situation that can maybe straight over straight someone. I think these are also the situations where you're going to see some some plays differentiate between cash games and tournaments. I think these will be the kind of situations you're looking at. So Tom Dwan makes his straight. He's going to check it. Ivan Leo. Top two pair. It's been outdrawn, but he still has a 25% chance to make a full house. Or possibly even chopping it up, 25% chance equity. And this is the spot that Lowe must have faced over and over and over, because in Triton Holden this is just so common. Checks it back, gonna try to boat up. 25% to do so. Ooh, straight on the board now. That might make him hero call a little bit more on uh, on Rivers, but calling for a chop is very painful. And the first thing I think about when I see this is what sizing is Tom gonna pick here? Yeah, we. he needs to not bet too big to scare Ivan, I would think. Tom Dwan can easily have a straight. We'll see what sizing he goes for. That looks like 400s. About half of the pot he's reaching for. Those are 375,000. Just trying to get any value he can. In regular no limits hold'em, you want to really bet a big here because it's also uncommon to have a straight. But here you can size down a little bit. It's fine for your bluffs because it's more likely you have one, and it obviously also works for your value so it's really important to kind of think about how you want to get value from hands in that way you know what would I do with a bluff how does it work for both my situations <coughs> nice lay down by Ivan you know even though like the price was so good he just knew that Tom had the straight it's good discipline a little bit more straightforward today to have a six there. and I wish you know he makes a little bit more plus because I think they will always they'll work a lot more so <laughs> you need to find a player Ooh. in between all that madness I cannot have a six there so yeah I think some of the craziest plays we've seen were actually from Tom Der Duan Duan shoved all in with Don't eight nine that, offsuit <laughs> over yeah. a raise and a call yeah and it's something he doesn't do every single hand it's just a little bit Occasionally with some timing. Yeah, some things never changed. If you've played with Tom or watched Tom play back in the day, pre-Black Friday, you'd occasionally see him shove all in or call a five bet with 9-3 suited and no limit hold'em. I think Rui just called... Did he just call 100k? 
no. I, I, so. I thought he threw in the chip. There, that's Rui's chips over there, right? Yeah, I think he threw in his card, so. Wow. No. <laughs> he did in. make the call. I, uh, I, I don't know uh, about really that. That seems, that seems very, gamble, very gamble. loose to me. I mean, gamble, gamble. does he think that Tom is going to come back no over gamble. the top here? Or? Obviously, he doesn't know Tom's oh, hand. Uh, but he coming. has to think that's a possibility. Tom shoving. Tom Schwen is shoving. Rui Cal oh, no, called 93,000. Now he's got a call. He's got Queen oh. 10 suited. No, uh, uh. He can scoop this pot if he hits. Gamble, gamble. This is a gamble gamble for sure. Yeah. This is oh, the biggest pot right now. 969,000 euros in the middle. One of these three players will be the best. Will win the largest pot. That's Almost me. a million euros. Huh. Elton yeah. at eight nine offsuit. Seven. Turns a queen. Oh. Rui Cow has two pair. Oh, oh. River is an eight. Oh. Wow. Oh. Bad river for Rui right. Cow there, and these two players chop up his money. Oh yeah. And Elton, if he wanted to gamble there. No he would win with 8 9 offsuit. Although, yeah, he would win with 8 9 offsuit. Huh? The, the tournament, too. I don't know how big that tournament was, but. We need more info, Elton. No, it was. Yeah, wow. Well. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't Sometimes know. Guys, it's like a hand bloopers, like a, a highlight reel of craziest hands. I, they made one for Vanessa Sells. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Wait, there is one? There is one for me, that's what it Back, back made it. It's yeah, great. Honestly, so, that hand doesn't even There's like an incredible crazy Vanessa 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 hand. Did you actually or did Jack A? Busting the main event. It's a new one, so she's gotten better. She like check raised the queen high board with Jack 9 off. Not like queen 8 or queen 10, just queen, like queen 6 3. Or no, she did Jack 8. Jack 8. Jack 8 on what was it? Like queen 7 3. She didn't, she didn't even have the. Let's start um, pre flop though. Pre flop's good too. She didn't even have like a uh, whatever. That, no, no, the oats to the to an open endo. Yeah. Like not that that's like a huge seal, but she. Yeah. Well, whatever. She got called and then shoved the turn, and the guy like got under. Sorry, will. And she shoved the turn. Huh? The guy got not plus, right? No, the guy. This guy. This is the spot. The guy just has ace queen on a queen high board, three bet, cold four bet spot, I think. Yeah. yeah. She's three bet then cold four bet with check eight offs. Yeah. Then check raised uh, queen oh, high. And then shoved the turn, and the guy had ace queen and call instantly. So yeah, for me, the favorite here. hand is uh, the one Ike played in 2006. Oh, the and hair so blown in the wind, the Ryan Dowd hand. Yeah, that was. It was 10 years ago, but it's still like my favorite. That's hand. the best hand ever. Puts his head down mm -hmm. on his arm, then goes, "I'm all like it. Raise. Yeah. Like yeah. So awesome. That would be even even cooler if the guy had like a strong hand or something. Yeah. Fortunately, he had a blunt. So Paul, we raised yeah, Tom, no, he's going to bet 120,000. Midway through the thought process that Dow didn't have anything, and then he went all in, which was kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Good flop, like Tom. Cool <laughs> Good shot, makes top pair, decent kicker. But it's probably a board that he doesn't expect Paul to bet a whole lot when he has ace king or ace queen. When was it? In one drop. One drop this year. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Like three bet tens, it came king jack something, said I'll bet the flop and then bet the turn and Kristoff. Kristoff like over, or uh, called the open and then called the squeeze. There it is. Out of the queens. With the queens. Eight or the open. board was king jack three, side I'll bet tens on the flop. Kristoff called, the turn was like a brick, and side I'll barrel was a block, and Kristoff pulled the queens. King jack tens, three something? Queen oh. jack, king, king jack three. Wow, but it's, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Lots of equity, huh? Not the full equity. Mm -hmm. Lots of full equity. I'm not, yeah, even sure I'm not even sure that's true. So I'm really not sure. Tom makes it straight. Paul can't be happy about this turn. Time. This is the one card that you're thinking of. No 10, no 10, no 10. I think Spotter Show has also had lots of interesting hands. Yeah. I like, and there was so many really cool table talks. Yeah, for sure. That was the best Spotter Show ever. I remember him hand between uh, Par and all oh, that, yeah, that bullshit. <laughs> I don't think about leading here. Oh, I think I did see that. Yeah, I think I did see that. But it was a spot where the guy could never have a set. 
It's 280,000. That's a really big bet. It's gotta have Paul worried. Probably not two guys at the table that have played as much as Tom and Paul against each other over the past years. Looks like he's gonna make the call. There's yeah. definitely some history going on here. Paul makes the call. It's nine hundred thousand dollars in the pot right now. Paul needs a queen and a queen only. Great bet by Tom on the turn. Went for a really big bet, but it worked. And like I said, these guys have tons of history playing each other. Wants to pretend like he gave up a bluff. I think that Paul will go for it when Paul has had like ace king of clubs. Maybe even had like ace nine or ace ten of clubs. Paul checks, gets the bad news. Really interesting play there from Tom. I know bit, Riva. Waiting for you. Waiting for you, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's such a weird feeling when you're playing a hand when you know that somebody knows your cards. There have been times in cash games that I played in Vegas where somebody was watching, couldn't handle the tension, and then gave away so much information on bluffs and rivers. Uh, Shanghai Wong's got a good poker face. When I see Tom with Jax here, I really hope that there's going to be a big hand behind, just like Key here. I really want to see how Tom plays this. Key with a massive hand on the button here. So Kenneth Key on the button of Ace King. Try and decide what to raise to. All in. Just gonna shove all in, just shut out his opponents. How much? Tom Dwan just wants to get a count. He's only put in two antes. One of his jacks are dead. thing is when your opponent just shoves like this it, his hand looks like ace king true that's why he's very tempted to get a count ace king still a favorite though over jacks all in. wow all in what a massive pot it's going to be 3 million pots wow duan just knows his opponent has ace king so he goes with it Ace King versus Jax. Tom Dwan, one of his Jacks are dead. Uh -huh. No, never mind. Oh. That was last time. Kenneth Key at risk. Yeah. No, no, no. I was 
took uh, uh, at least my hand. No, I don't know. Can you check how much is there? Shanghai Wong railing this all in. Did you call? Yeah, it should be 72. Pardon? No, so much. Uh, Okay, okay. Sorry. What a huge part. Three million chips in the middle. It's a flop. Wow, Ken of Key needs an ace or a king or is eliminated. 40% chance still. Over cards is so strong. What is it? It's an, ace. an ace. One jack remaining in the deck. It's only one jack. There is a queen. Kenneth Key's got to feel good about that. Up to three million chips. Tom Dwan loses a massive pot there. And it doesn't mean that we had a boring day by any means. It's just really hype. Pachikowski here. Nice jack. So bad Zikowski under a million now. Something? I don't think I can be considered a Tuan with an amazing spot. Probably gonna get called by Ace Jack here. I really like that he just considers this. We see a lot of reasonably loose all ins. I mean, once you make it 80k, it's hard to fold. True. Not bad. Yeah, this is what Tom Blon likes to see. Put your stun of shades on. Shades are working out. That I would not give those good. back to Sass. <laughs> not even a sweat. Almost always a turn sweat, but Tom Dwan has this one locked up. Gets a much needed double. Really happy to see it. Um, I, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the way Tom Dwan is playing. Not only how he's approaching the game, but also just the fact that he's considering everything so much. This guy plays in the biggest games in the world. Has a $255,000 re-entry coming up. And he's still just really going through the motions, just playing his A-game. It's it's awesome to see, honestly. It's really easy for a guy like Tom, who just plays crazy buying cash games with million-dollar stacks. He's been playing there for at least five years. Five, six years, even. Wow. So, all asked for kings. Has a straddle. And gets aces. With the real hand, gonna open it up to 30,000. Oh wow, this is the third time that we've seen a similar spot. And what, what's really important here is the straddle. The straddle makes everybody play looser because it's an extra blind. It's a bet made before people have seen their hands. So there's extra debt money out there. That's why people play more Lex. aggressive. Started with 1.3. Tom is gonna make it 120. Just imagine counting it and putting it back to your stack, you know, like in a ledge. Okay. Anything goes in this game. Anything goes. Race. I was gonna make it 320. Now, I can't wait to see what Tom Dwan is gonna do. 
This is a very, very tough spot for Tom because this is one of those moments where Tom Swan's image works against him. He's always going to feel that people won't respect him, that people won't respect his 3-beds. And Paul knows Tom like nobody else. So he might feel that Paul's taking advantage of him here. Paul thinks, you know Tom, I know all your tricks. I've seen him make this move when there's straddles around. Call time. <laughs> He's calling the clock for fun. Not really though, but... You could play some short plug game. Short plug. I mean, shot block is really good for poker in general, like, yeah. I mean, and it's it's actually like not as good for me because like I'm I'm on the slowest side obviously, but but. It, yeah, but He has that look. Gonna fall? But the fact that Paul's laughing doesn't tell you anything because he's always laughing. You. He has plenty of full equity. Tom has about 1.3 million dollars. He's facing a 320 thousand dollar raise. Spots we've ever seen on TV. Sorry, guys. I'm so, so comfortable right now. What's so complicated? I was thinking about this for a very long time. Of course, it's obvious because it's a very tough situation, but sometimes you do give away some information there. That size with like ace king and like jack or whatever. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Get snap call by Paul. No, better. Oh no. And a smile. Was that a straddle? Yeah. Okay. He said maybe KK instead of getting ace. Yes. Yeah. Who <laughs> said maybe KK? You yes. have Paul two said points, I'll straddle, maybe I'll get KK. The last time I straddled after five hours in that dude is. Run. <laughs> Hey, hey. Oh, man. All in a smile. It. Seems like they're running at once as well. Alright, 2% oh. shot, and that's it. Chips. That, I got lucky. This is not my casino. Million dollar <laughs> All four. No, 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 no. Go for a shorter. That's the best Tom's on there. <laughs> Alright, button's good. Huh? 
Seems like recently there was some some big games as well. Like, like the person just. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, it happens. I'm gonna start straddling more. 